All right, so this lesson we're working with roots, radical expressions. You're probably pretty familiar with these, so a quick review for us. Uh, number 25, for example, nice easy one, has two real roots. Well, what does that mean? So 5 squared equals 25. That's the opposite of taking the square root if you square something, right? Well, negative 5 squared is also 25. And so the square root of 25 could equal 5 or negative 5. So it has two positive roots. Every positive real number has two square roots. Now, they might not be nice numbers like this one, but every positive real number is going to have the plus or minus. However, when we see just this square root sign, so like if I just saw written like that, we're only talking about its positive square root. Sometimes we call that the principal square root. So square root of 16, I'm just going to write 4 for that. Okay, that's the principal. Now, if we are interested in both the positive and negative, we put the plus or minus out in front. And when we start solving equations with radicals, that'll, that'll become very important for us. So if I had plus or minus square root of 81, then, of course, I would include both of those. That could be plus or minus 9. Now, something key, pretty basic, but note there is no real square root or any even root. So if I did 4th root, 6th root, 8th root of a negative number. So, for example, square root of negative 9. Well, no such number exists in the real number system. So if you've got a square root, a 4th root of a negative number, then for this lesson anyway, you're just going to say, hey, there is no real root for that. Okay, let's look at a few examples. Find any real roots. Any real roots. Okay. Find all the real square roots. Now, all the real square roots of 144. So really, another way we could say that, they're saying, what is that? Well, this is a nice one. And so, of course, it is plus or minus 12. What if it's a number you don't recognize? Hey, no problem. Plug it into a calculator, right? For example, Desmos. Uh, in fact, let me just make that go over just a little bit and see my answer there. So here's the scientific calculator function of Desmos. And it's got roots, all kinds of roots. So for example, 144. Again, that's, that's one I hope we recognize. But some number you don't, hey, just plug it in, see what you get. Okay, how about this question? Find the principal square root. So that's where they're basically asking us to do this. Notice not the plus or minus. Of course, we would just say positive 12 for that. What if we do cube roots? Okay, so there's a couple different ways we could do that. Cube root, just the opposite of cubing. So you can just type this um, right in to a calculator. And also, let me, in fact, illustrate how you could do that. So if you use this button, the nth root button, so I could type my cube root there. And then I'm going to put my 216. Again, you can type here, use your keyboard on your computer. I just use my computer. Hey, that's 6. So this answer is 6. So what we're saying is 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. Now, you don't need to worry about plus or minuses for cube roots or any odd root. They only have one number that's associated with it. Now, on the other hand, where we don't do even roots of negative numbers, odd roots, that's no problem. Okay, let me just illustrate right here. So if I do the cube root of negative 1,000, negative, and I'll just type it in here on the screen where you can see what I'm typing. Hey, that's negative 10. No problem. And so this, okay, let me get my pen back here, is just negative 10. So odd root of a negative number, no problem. It's just going to be a negative answer, okay? How about a fourth root? What's the principal fourth root? Now, when they say principal, we're just talking it's going to be positive of 81. Well, let's just type it in. I'm going to show you two different ways you could do this. So we could do the fourth root of 81. Hey, it's 3. Okay? So it's just going to be 3 there. And again, basically what they're saying is, what is the fourth root of 81? Now, depending on your calculator, Desmos is great. If you've got a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator you're familiar with, another way you could type this in is you could do 216 to the one-third power. Negative 1,000 to the one-third power. 81 to the one-fourth power. Let me just illustrate that real quick, okay? So 216 
And let's go ahead and do an exponent here. Oops, sorry, I didn't want to square that. Let's do 216 to the b power, then it'll let me type it in. And we want to do 1 third power. So notice I'm just going to type 1 third like that. Hey, 6. Same thing there, okay. Uh, just clear that out. And how about 81 to the 1 fourth power? On your calculator, if you've got a scientific calculator, you can use a little caret symbol as well, type in those exponents. So there's different ways you can plug these in. We'll deal more with these fractional or rational exponents in the future. But same thing, instead of putting the root like 216 cubed, one third, so basically the root there is on the bottom of your fraction. Okay? Now one other thing as we go through, let me get rid of my calculator here. One other thing as we go through, we start simplifying expressions. Sometimes we need to introduce some absolute value symbols. Okay, let me talk about that is with a real quick example. Here's just something I encourage you maybe to write down. If you're doing an even root, okay, if you're doing an even root and you end up getting an answer that's uh, even, you don't need to worry about absolute values, okay? But if you do an even root and you get an odd power for your answer, that's where we want to use absolute value. Let me show you a real quick example. And again, the lesson will go through this. It's real simple. Square root of x squared. A lot of times we'll just say, hey, that's x, right? And when you're first learning it, that's probably what you said. But what if x were negative 2, for example? Okay. What if x were negative 2? So if I plug negative 2 in here, well, negative 2 squared equals, of course, negative 2 squared is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Notice I didn't get the same thing. And so what we need, because x squared would never be a negative number, even when you square root it, we need the absolute value. And so to make this true in any case, if I get a negative, we would say square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. And then x could be a plus or minus 2. Okay, And again, you only need that if you get an odd root out here. So for example, what if I did the uh, square root of x to the fourth? Well, that would be x squared, right? Now this would still always be positive, so I don't need to put it in an absolute value. I hope that kind of makes sense. And again, the lesson will take you through some examples as well. So let's simplify this. What's the square root of 4x to the sixth? Well, square root of 4 is 2, right? Pretty straightforward x to the sixth. Well, square root of x to the sixth is going to be x cubed. x cubed times x cubed would be x to the sixth. Notice it's odd though, and so I need that absolute value there. And so that's the way I'm going to report my answer. How about this one? That's a cube root. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Cube root, now n is even. So this is only for even roots. If they're odd roots, you don't even worry about it. You don't need absolute values. So here I know no absolute value is required. Cube root of a cubed, well that's just a, right? 3 divided by 3. b to the 6, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this is ab squared. Good to go, no absolute value is required. Fourth root, okay, I may need absolute values. Fourth root of x to the fourth would be x. Notice it has an odd power, it's a 1, so I need my absolute value there y to the 8th, so 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that would be y squared, that would always be positive, no absolute value required. Okay, okay those absolute values can be a little bit tricky, but just take some practice, look for patterns, and of course reach out with any questions.